Residential schools were built in partnership with the Canadian government and the Anglican Church. The school itself was meant to be, for lack of better terms, reduce the amount of Indigenous culture within the Indigenous people and to assimilate them to this culture that they were growing here in Canada. As Indigenous people, we uh, have thrived through the, you know, the, the most of what any people probably have gone through in history. This is what was placed as a memorial for those grave sites, essentially, that were unmarked. One of the kind of misnomers is that they think that 215 people were found, but that's not actually the case. It was 215 unmarked graves were found, so multiple people could have actually been within those graves. We're in the thousands now, but at that time there was 215. It's impacted us personally with my children's grandparents going to residential schools, seeing how it affected them and their, their children who are, you know, the father and, you know, relatives of my own children and seeing the impacts that they're having. We consider this intergenerational trauma. So this is all trauma that, that gets passed down from one generation to the next. Studies are, are coming out that talk about this intergenerational trauma. Not necessarily do you have to actually be the one that's being traumatized on your yourself, but if it's coming from your parents and you're looking towards the, the trauma, it, it kind of goes, goes into that. It's really something that has been on my mind for 15 years, essentially. This is our history here, and it was a genocide. They, they were taking these children to do genocide. We don't steer clear from the truth, and that's one of the main things, is that we're always honest in that way. We're always uh, staying towards that real truth of, of, of our people and of the area. My mother has always been encouraging me to, to follow that path of, of learning our ways because she made a big decision to get together with a, a man who was clearly Indigenous, who at the time didn't acknowledge those things because of he'd been brought uh, and, and raised by non-Indigenous people in the, probably the worst ways. His identity has been sort of uh, to a point where, you know, he didn't feel all that comfortable with, with who he was. I wasn't raised in a great situation and when I had children I just wanted to do the best possible thing I could do and learn everything about being a good parent and you know read every book that I could get my hands on so that I could make a difference in my own children's life. We have three canoes. Oh yeah. And we're getting Again. In and out of all different lakes. Wait, he's grabbing the stick. He's trying to hit me. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, we gotta make sure not to hurt him. Okay. Okay. I see also um, with my children's struggles that getting back to culture for them is really healing. Our youngest is struggling a little bit, and he is asking for smudge when he's not feeling good, and you know he's really excited to come to powwows with us and he is now wanting to make his own regalia and he it's it's lighting him up and it's giving him a purpose as well and feeling connected with his own roots i'm sharing a piece of our history of our culture of our people because those, those songs have been here since time immemorial. It's not about just doing something for the sake of doing it. It's doing something to honor our people that have come before us and, and our ancestors and it's to honor our future generations. Why is it called the grandfather drum? It was given to the, uh, to the Menta to help them bond, right? To, to not fight amongst each other. Right, right, so right. the grandfather just said, so we don't put anything on it. We don't, we don't leave it out in the open or anything. We, we respect it like we would our grandfather. My father, he never really got a chance to grow up in a situation where he could do that openly. So now that I can do it openly, I, I take all those opportunities to do it because he says to me, these I couldn't do when I was growing up and all the things that you're doing, I, I couldn't do without retribution or without uh, you know oppression. And now get all the information you can and, and be as proud as you, you can and, and I'm proud about what you're doing and you have to do this for our people. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
people want to learn about Indigenous uh, culture and history, the real history, especially after finding the 215 graves uh, in Kamloops, it opened a lot of people's eyes. So to me, it's a natural thing to be working towards doing this reconciliation work. Whether they're Indigenous or non-Indigenous, the whole idea is this, is be proud of what you are and to be understanding of our situation as Indigenous people here on Turtle Island.